that coach. There's an intercom system built into the helmet. The coach will have some more pointers for you. Put into practice some of the things that we talk about when your coach suggests you do. You'll leave here today amazed at how well you've driven. In fact, it's our pleasure to leave the van race experience feeling like you've driven better today than at any point in your entire life, okay? That's what we're shooting for. We try and make it as real as we can. Snow chicanes down straights to slow you down. You're able to get out there and drive the car quickly. What we ask back from you in return is for your care, your concentration, and for your responsibility. It's a race experience, but it's not a race that we don't make it competitive by ranking you with lap times. So just go out there and drive as fast or slow as you feel comfortable, can do so safely, and leaving here today with a smile on your face is all that we're after. When you are on the track, we'd ask a number of things. Starting with your first lap, we'd recommend you take that one quite slowly, maybe 80 to 100 kilometers an hour, most of the way for a number of reasons. You will be on racing slicks, and it does take some time for those tyres to give optimal temperature, to be driven flat out, if the driving cart's not familiar to you, see how it responds initially, the other reason's only something you can do for yourself. What you're trying to do on the first lap is to develop the best subconscious track map you can, remembering the information you're getting from the coach, distances from braking points, angles in the corners, try and retain that lap, then recall from it as you need it as you go through laps two, three, four, and five, and you'll go progressively faster. Don't feel as though you've done yourself out of a lap. The cars have electronic lap counters in them. The beacon is on the other side of the pit wall. You'll be going past the start and finish line for the number of laps that you've purchased. So when you consider that you get in on this side and you drive out all the way around and then come back in on this side of the wall, there's an extra one there for taking it a little bit easy for a start. On the track, we'd ask that you do a number of things. As I said, the first lap's important. We also want you to be looking out for some markers. When you get to them, there should be two orange to the width of the car length apart, plus about three metres. Try and drive the car between them if you can. We're there to mark some braking points and help navigate through some corners. When you're cornering on the track, we'd like you to be aware of and be looking for potentially four points at the corner. I'll list them on the board. First is called the approach point. It's all about getting the car in the right position on the track prior to your entry point to the corner. Drive through the apex and leave the corner through the exit point. It's last Father's Day, one of our drivers bit sharp than me he said, Excuse me, mate. And I said, Yes. And he goes, You know what you've just written up there on the board? He said, That reminds me of something. <laughs> so I said, Okay, what would that be? And he goes, That reminds me of my first marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I said it only lasted 12 months. I don't think we'll get into that story today. <laughs> You're driving in an anti-clockwise direction. Slight majority of the corners are left-hand corners because of that. We'll draw a 90 degree left-hand corner. We'll find where these four points are. Driving in from this direction, you want to approach the corner by getting the car up and on to the right hand edge of the track early. You certainly want to be there by this point. You leave your entry to the corner as late and as wide as you can, holding the car up here onto the right hand edge of the track to meet uh, right about here. This is your apex, symmetrical centre, tightest inside point of the corner. Make your exit, like your entry as late and as wide as you can. Drive the car back out here to the right hand edge of the track to exit at that point. Now draw a green your racing line in the direction in which you drive the car. It should look like this. Once you're up and onto the right hand edge of the track, stay there. All the way to the entry point and then turn positively into the apex. Try and create a nice flying smooth line through the apex and out through the exit. If you just look at the green line, I think what you'll see, drivers, is you've taken a 90 degree corner and widened it by using all of the bitumen that's available to you. Hopefully not too much of the grass and the gravel. And drive through that corner as smoothly and as quickly and as safely as you can. 
hardest point to get right, it's the entry point. The reason being, the driver the quite as much higher speeds today than what you might usually drive. You could get to about this point. Have what we call instincts of self-preservation. <laughs> Dang, I'm going way too fast for this car. I'm not feeling too comfortable about this anymore. You might develop a fear that you might not make it. Maybe you'll run off the track. And it will look to you like there's more room down here on the inside than there is up there on the outside. So we have a tendency to want to turn in too early, come down and have a crack at it this way. If you get to about that point, the new fear develops. <laughs> <laughs> moved along a bit to then realise that you've left yourself with not a lot of track space in which to turn the car. You need to be slowing the car down way too much and turning at the real sharp angle to exit that corner staying on the track. Now if you look at the board saying surely there can't be that much difference between these two lines, look how similar they are. Well that there makes a big difference because we divide corners into two halves We want you to be doing something different in the first half to the second half. Put line through the entry, through the exit, diagonally through the apex. That's the first half of the corner, and that's the second half of the corner. The first half of the corner, we want you to be doing one thing really well. Look at the green line. That is to steer the car. Second half of the corner should be all about the throttle, be accelerating, getting speed back into the car. Left your entry nice and wide and wide. You are on the green line and you steer positively into the apex. You can position the car in such a way it'll just about drive itself out of the corner without the requirement of much further steering from you, allowing you to get on the throttle nice and early and get good speed out of the corner. If however on this occasion maybe self-preservation has got the best of us just a touch, we fade it into the corner along the red line, giving away all this good track space through here. At the point where we get into the second half of the corner, we couldn't stop thinking about steering quite yet. We're on the brake right there rather than the throttle. Not able to throttle out till about that point there. So you can see why the green one's the one to go for now, drivers. We got all that sorted. Do that for us out there. <laughs> you fill me with confidence. <laughs> okay, we'll rub this out talk about something else that we know from experience we don't talk about. Some people will go about doing it in a way that initially doesn't work so well. It's going to be a number of occasions today when you're accelerating the car at maximum capacity, de-accelerating the car, going to a high pressure braking situation. So let's think for a moment how we almost instinctively apply brakes in our own cars every day. What we tend to do is give ourselves plenty of room, get on the brake early, gently, and apply increasing intensity. The problem with that approach is you'll go out there today and decide you probably want to drive quickly. So you'll be accelerating the car at high speeds to braking points and braking later. Let's say that's the braking point to slow down to drive around my right hand shoulder. You get racing into that point, then only got on the brakes at maybe 10% pressure, 20%, 30%. Suddenly the car will be long there and go, crikey, not going to stop this, jump on 150% to save yourself. So you've got to have almost the opposite approach, so that when you do go on the brakes, you go on them very hard indeed. The biggest mistake we have people make is they go out there and not fully utilise the brake. So even on the first lap, you're not going all that fast. When the coach says brake, we want you to give it 100% brake, 100%, 100%, 100%, and then you can get off the brake and get on the throttle and be on your way. So please use the brakes, they're DBA rotors made right here in Sydney, Frodo performance pads, we get them at a good price, we're happy to throw them away, so use them for us right from the moment you get in the car. Okay, um, let's have a look at a lap on the track lap, then we're going to have a few laps from behind the wheel, then we'll look to wrap up and start to move you downstairs. Um, we're here in these suites and you'll be driving in this direction. We start with the lamp starting at the beginning of the main straight. If you look up the straight and first see a car up here, it's where my finger is. If you'll be in that car and it'll be in third gear, full throttle, accelerating down the right hand edge, champion straight, and you want to change from third to fourth. And whether it's a four to hold and you'll find the 
fastest three gears around this track at three, four, and five. Same place in both cars. Remember that green grid pattern. Three to four is straight back. Fourth to fifth is forward and to your right. Full throttle all the way down to 120 out. It's a big throw over over eight point. Start on the brakes. DBA sweeper is a high speed corner. Leave the car in fifth. You go from an entry on the right to an apex on the left and exiting out to the right. There's a couple of good reasons why I'd want them out there. Could anyone name one or both? Yeah, thanks very much. Gentlemen with the white t shirts thinking ahead. That's your setup for the next corner. That's the correct racing line to be on for the left hand of that is ahead. There is one other reason. Not quite. Sorry, it's a pit lane. Pit lane, yeah, another gentleman down here realised I was covering that up, being a bit tricky there. When you are coming out of the pit lane, stay left. On all other occasions, keep well clear to the right so you're not impeded by slower cars coming out of the pits. And once you've got the car straight and it's full throttle, all the way down into what is technically probably the most difficult corner in Australian motorsport. Between two and 100 out, what needs to happen? Remember the car's in fifth gear, so it's hard onto the brakes, fifth down to fourth, fourth down to third, and turn in. You find the fastest way is not to drive around the inside. Think about it more like a diamond, with the tip of the diamond being a point we've marked about halfway around on the outside, drive out to that point. You feel like when you turn the car in, you can actually get out and walk faster. You're actually going at the right speed, because there's a negative camber back up in this corner, but the track slopes away to the outside don't have the car pointed in under throttle, the car will drive itself off the track. Hold the inside line, this occasion make it a centre track exit, drive up the centre of the track, third up the fourth, apex right, exit left, easing on the throttle as you drive over the top of winds rise, and as you're coming over the top, remember you're turning left, so you have to drive under the right hand edge, approach, hard on the brakes, Fourth down to third, entry into what we call the flip-flop. You see on the video that it's a short, sharp hill and your way over is marked by four concrete ripple strips. There's one on the left as you turn in, there's another one about 40% of the way up on the right. And the trick at that point is to think and head to the left. Hard to see on this board, but you'll see it on the video. If you can hit the apex, sorry, the summit of the hill, the left hand edge of the track, that apex pretty much lines up with the last one and straight line you through to the left hand edge of the back straight, third to fourth, and off you go, fourth gear. You'll see this turn coming, it's one of the few you don't apex, maybe slight brakes have a look, stay out to the left hand edge, so when you do come in, you're coming in a more of this angle, hard on the brakes, fourth down to third, lining up the right hand edge, ripple strip with the left, and then driving it out to the right. Between my two fingers is an extension of the track that was built 14 years ago. It's concrete, it's about this wide, and it runs for about 80 metres. Drive over towards it. If you're good enough, you could get two wheels onto it. Make sure they're your right two. <laughs> <laughs> what you're trying to do is get out as wide so that when you start to turn into this rising blind left hander that leads back onto the main straight, doing it from as wide and later position as you can, so that when you're squeezing on the throttle, you can hold one nice flying smooth line. But you don't want to apex it right here early, you want to get it right on the end. Again, you'll see it on the video, and if you get that line, you're out and over and on to the beginning of the straight, you can just keep powering on the throttle, and it's full throttle from that point on. So we've got all that drivers. Let's have a bit of a look. It's such a full room. Um, I'd like you to be able to see the screen the best you can. So if you're near the back and you would like to come and stand forward, feel free to do that. Um, this is a few laps from Rod Dawson. You may see Rod downstairs. I think he's doing some rides today. Rod is the pioneer of driving experiences in Australia, having started doing this for the first time in Australia 20 years ago. Been doing it ever since. Rod builds all of our cars, coaches all of our coaches. He's just going to give us a few laps. Just like we see here with Rod in the pit lane, there's a ton of people down there, including friends and family standing. So we just ask that each and every driver give us your maximum awareness and minimum speed at all times in the pits. There's 20 kilometres of wide open spaces out there to have a bit of a go. And as Rod's pulling out the pits, he's just going to change the camera view onto the front and leave it there. And as I said, keep left, 
coach will have the mirror so he can see behind you. You never have to look behind. He can do that. Probably be looking over your shoulder here. If he says nothing, stay where you are. Only if he thinks it's clear for you to move to the right will he tell you to do so. Otherwise, you'll come into the corner from there. On this occasion, it is clear. Lots moving over to there for an entry to the tip of the diamond corner. When you're turning in, probably in third gear here, look for the V at the village by side. There's the tip of the diamond. Turn it back in and get back on the throttle. Holding the inside line here. The negative camber there that you want to avoid by exiting up the centre. Drive up the centre of the track. There's a fairly late apex here on your right. And then nice smooth flying line, squeezing on the throttle, using the left hand edge of the track, coming over wind rise and down over the tunnel. Turning left, so there's your approach. It's hard on the brakes, fall down a third entry. Apex left and right. Think concrete left, concrete right, concrete left. There's your line, almost straight line and through the fourth one on your right, on the left hand edge of the back straight. Third up to fourth. Accelerating up the back straight. Again, you'll see this corner coming from a long way. Don't drift in. Stay out so that when you do come in, looking to line up this point here, and then it's hard on the brakes, fourth down to third, and that point there. Drive out to the right hand edge. There's that concrete. Stay out, stay out, stay out, stay out. Now come in. You don't want to act next to there. You want to just stay on the throttle, catch it right here at the end of that ripple strip. You'll be out and over and on to the beginning of the straight, right where you want to be, to be maximising your speed coming onto the straight. And get on the throttle from there, third up to fourth. The rods just change it up to fifth and accelerating. You'll see the first mark is 300, keep your foot to the floor, 200, but at 120 it's off the throttle and hard under the brakes. Leave the car in fifth, nice smooth flying entry, high speed corner, apex left. There's a good exit, just keep your eyes on the road, moving out to the right and get back on the throttle. Full throttle. And fifth gear, remember, it's hard on the brakes, fifth down to fourth, fourth down to third, turn it in. Tip the diamond, drive over towards it, turn it back in and get back on the throttle. Hold the inside line, centre track exit, drive up the centre of the track, third up to fourth, and it's apex right. Exiting out to the left, nice smooth flowing line, smooth as fast, and then driving it down the hill, under the right hand edge, approach, hard on the brakes, fourth down to third, entry, concrete left, concrete right, concrete left, there it is, concrete right, left hand edge, back straight. Sea right's picked up quite good speed here, just like the way we see it. Go a little bit faster as you go, obviously not fast enough for this guy rips up the inside. That's okay, we try and make it as real as we can. Your first lap or so, someone might overtake you later, you might overtake someone else. The coaches will work that out between themselves and tell you what to do. They have hand signals and light signals that they can use between them. So just be tuned in your coach, these two fast cars are going to overtake the white one. Hopefully his coach will see them coming, so he's going, now back off the throttle, I'll get these guys past us. Your coach will say, I've got the signal, let's move off the racing line, back on, it should happen without incident. I'll tell you what to do, don't get too close. That's too close, the problem is that driver's had as much track racing experience as you've had. Give each other a bit of grace, a bit of room for error. You'll make errors on every lap, hopefully less than the longer you drive. But if you're tailgating this guy in this very difficult corner, he misses his gear change, throws it from fifth down to second and goes whoops, stands on the brake, you go bang into the back of him, you pay, he pays, it always costs us 10 or 20 times more. That's not our concern, we're pretty good at rebuilding cars, but not too good at rebuilding bodies. We've got two full-time qualified paramedics sitting there, radio control to the whole network. We hope all they do all day is read the paper. We've also got an ambulance there that we never wish to pull out of that parking spot. Your best insurance is to be working with your coach. If you're doing that really well, you'll make sure you get around there nice and fast and safe as well. How's that look? Right? Yeah, yeah. I think this group was our virtual drive for the day. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, you're free to leave now. <laughs> Just kidding, the best is yet to come. Uh, guys, we've only got a few more minutes to go on the briefing. In fact, uh, Lyle's popped in here to help me out. What Lyle's going to do is just give 
your uh, little coloured sticker on your voucher a tick. That just lets our crew know that you've been briefed and I'll continue. We can just have your attention.